안녕하십니까? 온라인 서절의 김경원입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. Kim k y u n g w o n of Online Surgery. I'm honored to share with you my surgical clip today. Let's look at today's case. This is 67 years old male patient. In the upper right area, number 16 and 17 are missing. In number 16, it's practically healed ridge. According to the patient, about 10 years ago, the tooth was extracted and in number 17, about 3 months ago, because of severe mobility, it was extracted at a private clinic due to severe periodontitis. If you look at the patient's medical history, the patient had hypertension, which was under control. The patient was taking anti-thrombotic agent. If you look at the patient's history, the patient received coronary stent surgery in 2011 and 2013. It's been about 10 years since the patient received the, the final procedure. Because the intake of anti-thrombotic agent was not a major problem, we had the patient to suspend one drug and continue to take aspirin. The plan was to use one guy to place implants in number 16 and 17. You'll see it on CT, but there was a significant alveolar bone destruction in number 17. The patient said there was severe mobility in that area before extraction. We anticipated GBR to be necessary. In this site, I'm going to show you how the flap was open, elevated, and GBR was done along with implant placement. In number 16, you can see that it has been extracted 10 years ago, so this is fully healed ridge. There's no major problem. In number 17, on CT, defect was observed. On the mesial side, buccal wall is still there. I plan to remove granulation tissue if there was before performing GBR. I talked with one guide team. So in number 16, residual alveolar bone height was about 8.5 millimeters. Without using one cast, one guide kit was used to drill 8.5 millimeters. By doing this, you'd be able to engage the cortical bone on the sinus floor and place the implant in a more stable manner. The alveolar bone height is slightly more in number 17. By drilling up to 10 millimeters, it will be in contact with the cortical bone of the sinus floor. As for the side extraction was done three months ago and there was defect, in that case, a GBR would be a good idea. That was the plan. If you look at the panoramic image, in number 16, 8.5 millimeter and in number 17, 10 millimeter implants were placed. One guide template was adapted and on the palatal side incision was made. Flat elevation was performed in number 17, granulation tissue were removed thoroughly, implant placements were done and AOS was used. Bovine bone graft was done and on top, collagen membrane was added and suture was done. This is immediate post-op image and in number 17, in the distal area, you could see that bone graft had been done sufficiently and there is increased radio opacity. In number 16, implant was placed. This is CT image and this is immediate post-op 17. You can see that the implant is engaging the sinus floor just as we have planned and in the distal area bone graft was done. This is panoramic image 1.5 months post-op. This was at post-op 4 months. No major problems were observed in number 16. In number 17, the placement position looks okay and a bone is stabilizing. Sectioning was done on the distal side of number 17 and you could see that the bone graft material is still there and radio opacity still maintains. Practically speaking, the buccal wall is being maintained and it is healing nicely. Second surgery was performed 4.5 months later in number 16. The ISQ was 79.81 in number 17 it was 72 and 74. The conditions have improved compared to immediate post-op. 
on the panoramic image distal to number 17 implant the bone is stabilizing. As shown, ER type prosthesis were delivered. This is panoramic image post up six months. Distal to number 17, the GBR was done and it was nicely maintained. Let's take a look at the surgical clip. One guide template was adapted and mirror was used to check whether it fit properly. Because GBR was planned, slightly palatal incision was made from distal to mesial side, blade number 15 was used. Flap elevation was done. Number 17, extraction was done three months ago. Granulation tissue existed, so it was thoroughly removed. Because GBR was planned in number 17, in order to make sure that there's no granulation tissue is left, Curatage was done before placing the implant. It's not really visible here, but in number 17, granulation tissue existed. It was thoroughly removed. In this state, with the flap reflected, one guide template was adapted. Again, a mirror was used to check the fit. The flap was not fully reflected, but you can see that the flap would not get in the way of implant placement. Initial gold rim wide type was used in number 16. Initial drilling was performed. Initial drill in number 16. 3.5 by 8.5 one guided drill was used. I an, I actually anticipated slight penetration of sinus floor. 3.5 by 8.5 drilling was done. This was followed by 5.0 by 8.5 drilling. This was fully healed ridge, so full drilling up to 5.0 was done. I did not use steps gauge, but I anticipated the sinus floor to be slightly penetrated. KS3BA surface 5.0 by 8.5 mm implant was placed 80% using engine. Primary stability seemed to be good. Hand wrench was used. The implant driver was used to get final position. Primary stability was over 30 newton centimeters. Hex positioning was checked. In number 17, wide type initial drilling was done. Three point five by ten millimeter one guide drill was used. I thought that it might penetrate the sinus floor slightly. Drilling was done on the distal area because there was no bone. I considered using four point five for final drill, but because I was going to penetrate the sinus floor. I decided to use a 5.0 by 10 millimeter one guided drill for final drilling. KS3BA surface 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. If I had used a 4.5, but if the alveolar bone on top was not in con condition, the implant would not be placed properly. Therefore, I drilled up to 5.0 fully. 5.0 by 10 millimeter implant was placed as shown. Primary stability looked okay. Implant driver hand wrench was used for final position. Primary stability was comparatively favorable. It was over 30 newton centimeters. Hex positioning was checked using the mirror. 
Smart peg was used to measure ISQ value. In number 16, it was 78, 79. It was favorable. In number 17, in the distal area, because there was no alveolar bone, it was 69, 69. It's not very bad. It's comparatively favorable. In order to do GBR, cover screw was connected. Cover screws were connected. Cover screw was connected in number 16 first, and in the same way, it was done in number 17 as well. If you look at the mirror, distal to number 17, there's a bone defect. AOS particle bone, which is a bovine bone from Austin, was used as shown. Sufficiently, GBR was done. Distal to number 17, Implant was slightly exposed and AOS was used sufficiently for bone grafting. On top collagen membrane, an OS guide was used to cover that area. Number 17 and distal to number 17, two layers were used. You can see that the bone grafted area was covered by OS guide and suture was done. Flap was positioned and anchor suture was done using the mesial tooth. GBR was done, but not significant amount was augmented. Even without periosteal releasing incision, suture was deemed possible. Suture was done. Figure of eight suture was used. When you use a one guide, many people just think of flapless surgery. However, as shown in the maxilla, especially in the posterior area, if there is bone defect around the implant top area, GBR can be planned. One guide template was adapted before surgery and an incision was made on the palatal side. To elevate the flap without tissue punch, one guide was used and implant was placed. In number 17, on top there was no alveolar bone. If you are to penetrate the sinus floor, you need to drill up to 5.0, and once the implant engages that area, you could gain a sufficient stability. Thank you for watching.